Hello everybody, welcome to Unit 4 Biology Area of Study 1. Today we are looking at how to determine relatedness between species. So in terms of looking at determining relatedness between species, the dot points that we are looking at are just these two over here. So looking at molecular homology as evidence of relatedness, um, which is identifying DNA and amino acid sequences, and the use of phylogenetic trees. If you are looking at this video, not in 2020, um, mitochondrial DNA, DNA hybridization, and looking at master genes will be covered in a separate video, so just keep an eye out for that one. All right, starting off today, though, with molecular homology. So homology means, again, looking at similarities at now the molecular level. And when we're looking at the molecular level, we're looking at DNA sequences. Um, and we know that DNA is forming or the code for to eventually form proteins. And to form proteins, we are joining amino acids together. So we're looking at similarities and differences between amino acid sequences and DNA sequences of different animals. So molecular homology as evidence of relatedness between species includes DNA and amino acid sequences. We know that proteins are made up of 20 different amino acids, no matter what organism you are, no matter how big you are, no matter the size of that particular animal or the species, um, those amino acids are coding to produce particular proteins. Okay, so that's why we say that the amino acid coding is universal. We can see that there is a common evolution, evolutionary ancestor um, when there is consistent observations and similarities of amino acid sequences. So if an amino acid sequence is similar for two particular animals, we can suggest that they have or share a common ancestor. Species that are more closely related, they're going to have less differences in their amino acid sequence that's coding for that particular protein. And species that are less closely related are going to have more differences in the amino acid sequences that are coding for a particular protein. So if a species is related, okay, if it shares a common ancestor, they're going to show more similarities in their biochemical and genetic makeup. And species that share a more recent common ancestor are going to share more similarities than species that are a distant common ancestor. So what we are looking at is we are comparing the um, DNA sequence or the amino acid sequences um, for different animals and looking at the similarities and differences that they may have to identify whether or not they are related. We can then use this information okay, based on how much DNA they have in common to then form our phylogenetic trees. So phylogenetic trees or evolutionary trees are basically diagrams that are showing the evolutionary relationship or descendants um, from molecular data or using evidence. So they are not fixed. They could change as more evidence sort of comes into light in the future. Um, the information that we have may change, but based on the information that we have, we can form these um, estimations of what, what we think is related. So they can be drawn using diagonal, vertical or horizontal lines. So I've got a couple of examples of what phylogenetic trees may look like here. Basically they branch out. All right. So the starting point, which is going to be closest to the bottom or the closest to the left, is our ancestral lineage. So we are going from the past to the present time. Okay, so we're following along our phylogenetic tree in terms of time moving forward. Where there is a joint, all right, between where our two parts of our tree is leaving or diverging, that is where we can say that there was a common ancestor between two different animals. So here, um, at this point here, whichever organism would be written down would be a common ancestor of both A and C. This diagram here that I'm going to go through basically summarizes all of the information you need to know in order to analyze a phylogenetic tree. 
So the tips, which are these edges here where we've got labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, are our descendant groups. So the most recent um, groups that we have been able to identify that sort of come off of our phylogenetic tree. Where we have a node, okay, so these little circly bits, they are going to denote an ancestor, a common ancestor um, of two or more descendants. So remember, descendants are the organisms that are coming off of the original. A uh, branch indicates the speciation event, okay, and shows the relationship between the ancestor and the descendant. So this thing over here, these lines, they are called branches. Um, and the branch length is also very important here. The root, okay, right at the start is the common ancestor of everything that is shown in this evolutionary tree or this phylogenetic tree. Okay, so the root is a common ancestor for everything that is shown. Sister taxa are two groups with a common ancestor that are not shared with any other group here. So you can see if we look at the original, this one comes off here. So all of these guys at some point share a common ancestor um, over here, whereas a sister taxa, they only share a common ancestor with the original um, that we start off with at the root. So you need to be able to identify and examine and analyze these phylogenetic trees to be able to figure out which two species may be more closely related. So if you were to look at this one here, you can see that A and C are more closely related than what A and B would be, okay, because they are closer together. They have a more common, recent common ancestor. Um, and you also may need to be able to draw these from information that's been given to you. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I'm more than happy to help you out. All right, have a good day. Bye.